Hey, you're listening to the first episode of the TA Pedals podcast. I'm Tristan. And I'm Stefan. We wanted to do this podcast to help you guys get to know us a little bit better. It's kind of hard to, you know, communicate uh, who we are through the internet and uh, some of it gets lost in translation. So we're just going to talk and uh, hopefully you enjoy what we're going to do. I think it's going to be fun. Uh, we've been working pretty hard since uh, October of 2021 uh, when we opened uh, on working on getting some uh, cool effects pedals out to you guys. We we just want to make cool things that help you guys make cool things, and so that's that's what we're gonna do. We have uh, we have a pedal out right now called the uh, Vampire Squid Fuzz, and uh, it's pretty cool. It's uh, it's like a, a rat topology uh fuzz pedal it goes into distortion uh the distortion area uh quite a bit too i i'd say the full sweep of it is mostly distortion actually it's it's really nice it sounds really cool i agree <laughs> <laughs> we have some we have some demos on youtube and uh our instagram page too if you guys want to check that out but uh we we plan on putting some cool stuff out in the next few months uh can't talk about it right now but uh yeah it's pretty cool so check us out uh, Stefan came over today and, uh, he, he made me beautiful again. <laughs> uh, we've been, uh, hard at work on some stuff and I have definitely been neglecting my self care. And, uh, now I'm one of the beautiful people again. Yeah. It looks really good. Thank you. Well, it's thanks to you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh. I think we should talk about the uh, squid a little bit more. Um, I like the way it sounds. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. like I'm not like a a big guitar player, but um, when I when I hear songs that I listen to on the radio and I hear that distorted guitar sound, uh, and I'm trying to get a similar sound out of my guitar it's not hard to find it with the squid yeah that's like whenever we took it to Bo at cousins uh music in fort smith um he he seemed like i was really happy that when he was sweeping through the range of the distortion and the filter um he was like it's really easy to get a good sound out of it because uh, it's so usable. Like he, when he was going through it, he was like, yeah, I can't find a bad sound in it. And I thought that was really cool because, you know, obviously with us being the manufacturer of the pedal, we we tend to be, I mean, it's, it's inevitable that we're going to be biased, mm -hmm. but whenever I was using the squid, what he said is exactly how I felt too. I was like, there's, there's not really a bad sound in the box. And, um, I, I started actually choosing it over some clones that I've made for myself. Uh, I had like a Tone Reaper clone and a Black Ash clone. And, you know, those sound really great. And there's nothing wrong with those at all. I still go to them from time to time. But whenever I was looking for that specific sound, like I just kept choosing the squid. And uh, so to hear someone else, you know, like kind of confirm my bias a little bit um, was really cool. And since then, we've had a lot of people confirm the, you know it's it's a cool pedal and yeah. that's that was my main goal was to just make something that was going to help uh, inspire other people to make cool music yeah so and it, it just uh i i just love how versatile it is because like i know i can uh like we have the the clipping options where you got the silicone and the germanium clipping and as well as the op amp and i like being able to like in my in my setting, I can't turn the volume up too loud because I live in a townhouse. Uh, I got neighbors, and I also got kids in the house, and I don't want to disturb anyone with them when I'm playing. <laughs> so it's really cool that like I can put it on op amp mode, and it's super loud, and like my volume button on on the amp is like barely on, like. Whoop. 
<laughs> that's it. <laughs> it's not even hitting the one number. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what's so great. And I, I you know, I think that a lot of guitar players um deal with that because you know, whenever Sydney and I had uh Sydney's my wife, by the way, uh <laughs> whenever we had our first, you know, son, our only son, that's why I downsized my rig. I had a uh, a Mesa Boogie dual rectifier and an orange two twelve cab, and that thing would like blow the walls off my house if I wanted it to. Yeah. But like I decided to go digital with the axe effects to, you know, get those sounds uh, of a cranked amp in a recording situation, but it could it'd be completely silent. And so that's, yeah, you're right. Like that's, that's one of my favorite, the volume actually, which is, you know, kind of weird, but the volume is one of my favorite controls on the squid because you can crank up the distortion and it can get super loud or you can like dial it back because without having to worry about saturating the tubes or, you know, uh, whatever of your amp by cranking it loud or even the, you know, the power section, you can crank that, uh, distortion knob on the squid and then dial the volume back and still get really saturated, uh, tones that are really great. And that's, that's pretty nice. Yeah. I, I didn't think the volume was going to be like the feature that I was like, Oh, that's really yeah. useful. It is, it is for sure. Uh, and the, the filter knob, uh, I like messing with the filter knob a lot because you get that like kind of grungy sound and then you get more of like a clean sound towards the end. And I like that, uh, that I can mess with that and get different styles or different tones when I'm playing. Yeah. Um, I've for, I don't know why, I don't know how I got on this like ambient thing that I've been wanting to do. Yeah. Um, but like, I've been like obsessed with like delays and reverbs and modulation and things like that. Um, and the filter knob on, on the squid, uh, because it goes so dark, sometimes I've used that like in a recording, um, setting to make like almost like a pad, Mm -hmm. like a, like a, like a synthesized pad thing. Like if I crank the distortion to where it's like practically, it's practically like a square wave because it's so clipped and then like roll the filter on and add a reverb. It's, it's a really nice, like textured ambient thing going on. And to be honest, like before we made the, the squid, I wasn't really into drive pedals, which is weird because like, that's a guitar player thing. Mm -hmm. Like we like our different flavors of distortions and overdrives and whatever. And uh, most people would say you can't, have too many, but I never used them. Like I, I, you know, did the, uh, speaking of like the Mesa thing, I always did the tube screamer in front of the amp, um, to tight, like tighten up the low end, but I didn't use it for like drive really. And so I've never really been into like distortion pedals until we made the squid. And now I'm like all about it. Yeah. It's, it's just weird. Like how, um, a certain flavor of pedal comes along and it just changes your opinion on the whole category. And then you like do the deep dive and go down the rabbit hole and start before you know, it, you have 20 dirt pedals on your board. Yeah. But you only need one. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can do a lot with it. That's for sure. Yeah. But, um, I, I think what really changed my opinion on dirt pedals too, was seeing how it was used in like shoegaze. Yeah. Uh, because coming from like a metal background, you know, hardcore stuff, like that's what I played growing up was hardcore and um, uh, like old Kill Switch Engage, Avenged Sevenfold. That's kind of what got me into it. And then when I got a little older, I started listening to bands like Escape the Fate. And it's, it's my taste in music has just gotten much harder from there and more progressive with stuff like Periphery and Bell of Maya and stuff like that. And so coming from that background, you didn't use a pedal for distortion. Like that's not what you do in the, in those genres. You don't want to do that. Or I, I didn't. And I thought that that's how other people felt too. Um, so what changed my opinion was hearing how people were using it in, in things like shoegaze where the guitars were more textured and they kind of set back mm-hmm. uh, just to provide like a sense of space and, um, uh, like, like kind of in an aggressive way, but it's still ambient. So it's, it's weird, but that's kind of what got me onto the distortion, uh, pedal road, I guess. Yeah. It's more like a, it's more like a mood setting rather than a technical guitar playing. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And that's really cool for 
now like the music genres of today is not so technical it's the technical parts uh come into play in vocals now in in the current genres um and you have more of like a background music and it's not complicated it's simple and it it sets the tone and then you have your vocals come in and you have you can pay more attention to the lyrics and what they're about and what what they mean rather than listening to the musical instruments so yeah it's you're crazy. right but it's it's weird because music seems to go in cycles mm-hmm. like for example all the like shredders in the 80s yeah like um and it's kind of weird like being old enough to notice these patterns now like uh, I'm almost 30 and so you know being born in the early 90s like when all the grunge stuff was big I had to look back a few years to really notice that this was happening today. But, you know, in the 80s, we had all the people shredding like Ingve and, uh, you know, John Petrucci was going then. And uh, just, just, just everyone who was setting the bar for what could be accomplished on the guitar. And then like the 90s came around and people were like, well, yeah, that's cool. But like, let's just play some rock music. Like, yeah. let's, you know, stick it to the man and the system the, and just play some stuff with some emotion in it. Yeah, the, the ni- 90s music is not about the technical technicality of of the guitar playing or the drums or anything like that. It's like what I remember is uh, listening to the songs and the lyrics and and the meaning behind it. Like if you take, for example, like bands like three doors down and Lincoln park, like those were not like the music was good, but like, it wasn't about the music per se. It was more about the lyrics and how they made you feel Yeah, like what that song was about and how it tied into things that was happening to you. Mm -hmm. And like, that's like, and that's, that's crazy to me. Yeah. It's, it's like, so after the whole like grunge thing and then in the early 2000s like the new metal thing with like Evanescence and Linkin Park and all those bands uh then like around like 2008 is when people started getting technical again mm-hmm. and it's like it seems like it's maybe not quite every decade but it seems like maybe like every like 15 years people start pushing the boundaries of the instrument again mm-hmm. and like around 2007 all these um bands who are kind of staple like gent quote unquote gent bands uh they started you know rising in popularity and people started you know realizing the limits of the instrument and then they started playing seven eight nine ten string guitars and it's like it it just got so wild for a little while where people were making the craziest heaviest most technical music that they could possibly listen to and even those bands today i think have have backed out of it because we're going into that same thing where grunge is coming back again Mm -hmm. and people are just trying to write good music, good songs that people can relate to that provide a certain energy. Mm -hmm. Because I think not only do, you know, does the music go in cycles? I think the music follows the cycle of how people are and the problems that we face and the points that we are at in our lives when we start to make that kind of music as musicians ourselves and so people can relate to those things, and um, yeah, it's it's just weird. It's weird how it's it it's like the focus switches from being a virtuoso on the guitar to being a great songwriter. Yeah, really really cool though. It's like it. I don't know like um, the exact you know number of years that are determined the switch of generations, but it definitely falls into that where like you have this generation that's creating this type of music and then it switches to the next generation that's creating this type of music. And I feel like as we go, like we're going, like hopefully, you know, there's going to be a point where uh, we mold into where it's, it's like we're looking at technical things, but we're also focusing on lyrics as well. And like, I feel like that kind of music is going to be a pretty cool thing to have. Yeah, I think that something weird that's happened over the last like two or three years specifically is the breakdown 
uh, or it's that's when I've noticed it at least is the breakdown of genre too. Mm-hmm. It's like people are mixing the craziest stuff together. It's like like you have like eighties influenced pop. Um, you have like like weird indie cult music mixed with metal. Like it'll go from like an acoustic guitar. I want to love everyone, you know, type of feel to just like the most insane, <laughs> yeah, like the most insane <laughs> breakdown that you've ever heard. And it, like, I like that, but it's just like such a wild ride. Like, yeah. <laughs> it, it's it just so hit, up and down. It, yeah. It, it just, they're trying, they're trying so hard to hit so many emotions all in one song. Yeah. And like, some of them nail it. Though. Yeah. It's it, like, it seems like, and I guess for a lot of people it doesn't work, but it's crazy because like some artists really know how to make that work. Like, um, I don't know if you've ever listened to Poppy. Uh, I've heard of them. I don't. I don't know if I've ever actually listened to them. Well, she's she's a um, an internet personality, or she started out as an internet personality. She was making these like weird videos on YouTube. They're they're cool, but they're weird. Like it would be her just blankly staring into the camera and like being like, "Have you seen this?" Where is it? I don't know. Can you see it? Where is it? And like, I don't <laughs> like that's, that's what it was. That and like, she was being managed by this dude who I think who I, I'm not positive, but I think he was like forcing her to make things that she didn't want to make. And so she came out with this like album of like, and it was good. Like I really liked it. It's actually what got me onto her. So no critique on the music at all, but I just don't know if it was really what she wanted to do. And it was like electronic based music. And, um, it just, it didn't seem completely sincere, but then like she signed to a label and I think they made her man, like they fired her manager, I think. And so like, he's out of the picture and people were circulating rumors that he was like abusive to her. And point is that I'm getting at is like, she started making this music that is like some of the craziest stuff I've ever heard in my life. And it, just had no limits as far as genre went. Mm -hmm. She, she screams, she sings like softly or she talks, she has so many different subjects about like the environment and women's rights and stuff like that. But also about like trying to bite your teeth (laughs) and like about how like eating ice cream and stuff like doesn't satisfy her. She wants to drink your blood. And I'm like, what is this? Like, I, I just don't know, but I love it. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm like man you're just doing whatever you think is cool and it, that's what it should be yeah and i i feel like like us as humans like feel like we need to fit in somewhere and fill a category oh we yeah absolutely we and, gotta divide everything and that's why that's why there's so many different genres is because i don't want to be a part of that genre i don't want to be a part of that genre i want to be somewhere in the middle and now there's a new genre mm-hmm. and that that happens so many times and now there's so many genres i don't even i don't even know half of them at least yeah like <laughs> um i've you know the the genre argument used to be a big deal like back uh whenever i was in high school about a lot of emo bands and it was like oh no they're not post hardcore they're progressive ambient electronic uh folk m- doom metal and, and a couple other words yeah and like don't like <laughs> and don't confuse it because like <laughs> it's different and like at some point like I, I i still hear people argue like that today over genre and it's gotten to the point where when I hear that argument comes up or someone asks me about it, I'm like, do you like it? And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, then just listen to it. Yeah. Like why? Like stop trying to define it. And I have no problem with like people trying to define it, but arguing over the definition. I'm like, what's the point? What are you doing? Well, I, I think <laughs> like, I think the main thing, like if, if it were me, if I was in that argument, like I'm, I'm more of a simple genre kind of person. And like, if, if there's a if there's a genre that someone's talking about and I don't know what it is, then <laughs> then it's like it's like well how does it relate to this genre or this genre and like so I can get more of an idea of what it is and then like I think like the main thing is is like people want this genre like I like this genre so how can I find more music that fit this genre and so you have to like specify it 
to the T so that you can find that specific genre. Right. And I mean, I think the whole idea of genre with books or movies or whatever is just so like you can be like, oh, I like this. So and it's they're calling it rock. Oh, cool. Like, I'm going to go listen to more rock because yeah. that's what I like. Yeah. But, like, it just gets it. There's a point where it's so arbitrary. And, mm-hmm. like, people, there are so many musicians making music today, and everyone has their own unique take on whatever genre they are, you know, trying to fit in or they just naturally fit in that you, you can't classify everything. You just you can't do it. Yeah, but they're going to try. Yeah, they are. <laughs> they definitely are going to try. And, like, not to mention, like, it's like, it's kind of weird because that all, I think, comes down to um, like a marketing aspect to a certain extent. Like, it's it's like if you play this certain music, then you have to look this certain way yeah. and you have to do these certain things and have these certain values so and opinions. Rules. And it's exactly, <laughs> it's, and it's like, why can't you just make good music like i think there i think there are a lot of people out there who who feel that way who are just like well i don't fit in this box but like i and i i think that i'm one of those people like um some people that have heard the kind of music that i listen to based on my attitude like wouldn't have never guessed they're like oh you listen to that devil worshiping (laughs) stuff i'm like no like i can't believe it's still even referred to it that way like well we're in the the Midwest. So. I, I guess so. But like, it, it just blows my mind. Like that, that music, like the, the, that style of music that has been deemed to fall in that, in the category of devil wor- <laughs> worshiping music has been around for a long time. Like I would, I would say at least early eighties. Yeah. And people still hear like, if it's dark and low, it's automatically devil music. Yeah. Well, the the problem is it's because they're hearing, but they're not listening. Yeah, exactly. That is a big issue. Like, for example, my parents used to, you know, not want me to listen to that kind of music. And um, my dad likes, you know, um, bands like like the Cars and, and ACDC and stuff like that. And there's nothing wrong with those bands. But um, I would listen to, it when I was a teenager, a band called Of Mice and Men. You, mm-hmm. you know, huge band. Everyone yeah. knows who they are. And... My dad would be like, I can't believe you're listening to that. And I'm like, well, he, and he said stuff like he can't understand what they're saying and whatever. But then I would always reference ACDC and I'd be like, you listen to stuff that says I'm on a highway to hell of mice and men in this song. He's talking about appreciating his dead mother and all the values she passed on to him so he can spread hope to people. I'm like, which, what's de- what, which one's devil music? Yeah. Like, a- and <laughs> ACDC is literally like, they literally, you know, <laughs> And like that's they, <laughs> they literally project themselves as like part of the devil army or whatever. Yeah, like, like the they horns wear horns. Stuff, yeah. They wear <laughs> horns on their hats. ACDC is supposedly supposed to stand for S after Christ Devil came. Like <laughs> I've never real. heard that one. <laughs> I, I've I've heard that all my life. Like I don't know if it's true or not, but like I've heard that. Uh, and it's just like they're straight up marketing themselves that way. Yeah. And well, they you're were calling trying to be wild. these people devil music. Right. Well, it all it all <laughs> goes back to I think people. Um, like I said, they're they're hearing, but they're not listening, and they're judging what they don't understand. And that's that's the way it's always been. That's the way it will always be. Yeah. Like the generation that comes along after their parents' generation or, or you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah. When, when a generation is separated and the, the older generation starts to look at what the younger generation is consuming, they're so out of touch with what is popular at the time mm-hmm. and, and why it's popular that they look at it from this removed perspective where they don't understand what they're seeing and they don't try to understand what they're seeing. They so they they judge it at face value, and it's that's just how it is. It's almost like they're in a box, and everything outside the box doesn't fit in the box. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, but it can fit in the box if you just take a minute to if you try just, to get if it. If you just open the box, <laughs> everything changes. Yeah, and who doesn't love opening boxes? <laughs> I, mean, I love opening boxes, <laughs> but. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's just one of those things, you know. And I think that, you know, you have to 
not just with music, but anything, you have to just look inward and, and define what your own morals are and try to live the best life that you can according to what you think is right and mm-hmm. be open to having a discussion with people about why you like what you like. Try to help them understand instead of just casting them aside and being like, oh, you're just a judgmental bigot or whatever. <laughs> but like maybe like show them the music and like like why you like it, why the guitar riffs are cool, why the you know lyrics are good or, or whatever. And yeah. maybe they won't understand, but I think that that's the point of music anyway is to help people connect. Mm-hmm. And even if it's you know kind of a rough start, someone says – well, I don't listen to that devil music. <laughs> you can just be like, well, it's not actually devil music. Like, check this out. It's you know? just like, like I, I'm, I'm very happy that we're starting to move out of that. Mm-hmm. Like, as a society, uh, we're starting to be more open about the things that we like and we don't like. And it's okay to be this way and it's okay to be that way. And everyone, everyone's starting to be more accepting of individuals uh and i'm happy about the way it, we are moving forward as as a society well i think that's what makes it beautiful you yeah. know i think that people have being able to have their own opinions on things and and likes and dislikes is what keeps it interesting it's yeah. it's necessary for sure but you know people who um want to be all judgy or whatever they don't they don't see it that way but it's like it's so enriching to have different kinds of people yeah and and like the those people are a lot of those people are the same people that will judge you on other things Mm -hmm. outside of music yeah that's true yeah and if you live a certain way that's not right yeah (laughs) (laughs) but (laughs) to bring it full circle um that's why I like the genre, um, the mixing of genres in music mm-hmm. so much because it's breaking barriers. Yeah, and maybe you know it'll get those metalheads like if you listen to that the song um, X by Poppy and it's got like that weird acoustic cult music, mm-hmm. you know. But then it has a heavy breakdown. Maybe that'll give um someone who's into metal and only metal a you know taste of something else that they might like, mm-hmm. and then they'll go and do uh be more interested in that kind of thing so it's it's just you know spreading different things yeah and i hope um i'm really hopeful that like all the breaking down of all the genres into subgenres into subgenres into (laughs) subgenres eventually you know we're not gonna have genres we're just gonna have music yeah and and that would be really weird but like very interesting too because yeah. then and i think this is something that's needed to happen for a long time too at that point you if you're not defining it by a genre you're defining it by the artist exactly and artists are are people who unless you are a giant name you are financially suffering trying to take uh chase a dream and it's it's rough dude like i, f- I feel like with as far as like i feel like with anything if you just keep going and you keep working hard and you give yourself the best options to move forward. Anyone can succeed. Uh, I feel like if you're like, if you have a, like this type of music that you're putting out, do that music the best that you can put it out to as many people as you can put yourself in as many situations where people can see you can hear you. I feel like, eventually it's going to catch on if you just keep going and keep working at it. Potentially, but the argument that I would put forward is uh, companies like Spotify paying fractions of a penny yeah. uh, per listen, which is is nuts. Uh, and not only that, but the market, because the market's very saturated because of the accessibility of recording equipment in uh people's homes now yeah like you can make a professional sounding record by with you know a two hundred dollar interface a two hundred dollar microphone or one hundred dollar microphone even and some software computer. yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's that's true you do have to have a decent computer but um but yeah it's it's so saturated now and so I, I don't see the way out of it i don't have a solution i've been thinking about it for a long time but i i definitely think that artist recognition and fans 
financially being willy, willing <laughs> willing <laughs> financially willing financially willing to support the artists they like um it's it's kind of a must you know what yeah. i mean like you can't you can't just be like oh i i like that person's uh music and i want them to succeed so that i can have more music from them and i know it's expensive sometimes to like promote a record to get it into the right in front of people so that that person can have enough you know streams to pay for their food and and mortgage and stuff but but you shouldn't be but i'm not going to help them out (laughs) you shouldn't like any artist that is really trying to to get out there and move forward should not be relying on their music for their income they shouldn't they should be they should be they should have a regular income and then work towards a point like we're doing, you know, we're, mm-hmm. we're working a full-time job and then we're doing a pedal. We're running a pedal business in our free time, basically. And eventually, you know, like when, when our income, you know, reaches a point to where we can do it full time and really focus on it, then that's when we break away from our normal jobs. And I feel like any one who wants to do their own thing should follow a similar path. Like you shouldn't, you shouldn't like, Oh, I'm going to be an artist and I'm going to focus on my, on my music or whatever like that. And disregard your life. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like you shouldn't, you shouldn't focus on it so much that you take away from the life that you're living. You know what I mean? Like it should definitely be a situation where you're making money to support your artistry. And then when it gets big enough to where you can only worry about your artistry, then that's the point where you jump off. Yeah. And, and I don't completely disagree with you, but it's like, it's one of those situations where, um, you know, people are working those full-time jobs and not able to fully commit not because they their music isn't good enough or their company isn't good enough or whatever. It's because, uh, first, I think the market is very saturated specifically with music, but but second of all, not being like... Mo- I don't know where I want to go with this. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I, guess, I guess I'll just say it's not the ideal situation for an artist, but that's why... There's the phrase "starving artist." It's it's 100 not the, the way our world is set up now. It's it's not easy to get heard. Right. It's not easy to be seen because there we have we have so many people on the planet and everyone's trying to do their own thing. Right. And to get more than one person excited about it is hard, but to get thousands or even millions of people excited about it is even harder. And that's why if you're if that's what you want to do, you got to do everything you can to be put yourself in that position. I'm going to look something up real quick because it's just it's a staggering statistic. I can't remember it off the top of my head, but it's like how many streams uh you would need from Spotify uh to make a minimum wage and like on a regular basis. Um Let's see. I'm looking it up right now because because this is this is the point that I'm trying to make is even if you get a bunch of streams and stuff, that's not where your money's coming from, really. Yeah. Um, this says a solo independent artist keeping 100 percent of their streaming revenue needs at least 100,534 streams per month. That's on title um, to earn a minimum wage on Spotify. The artist would need 287,000. 568 streams to see a similar return per month. Mm-hmm. Like that's, it's not impossible, but that's a lot. It is. Like if you multiply that times 12, you know, that's 1,400,000 and whatever thousand a, a year. Yeah. Just to make minimum wage. And we all know you can't live on minimum wage. So it's like my, my point is, that I don't think the stream, like with the new environment that we have with streaming uh, services being the main way that people consume media, 
I don't think the media companies are doing enough to support the artists with their um, music or, or videos or whatever. I don't think they're supporting them enough to even give them enough money to just survive. I completely and agree I think, with that. And that's, that's what I was trying to say earlier when I said, I don't know where I want to go with it. That's the point that I'm trying to make is like you have to. And so each artist has to unfortunately wear a bunch of hats yeah. and not only market their music, which may be fantastic and no one's listening to it, but also wear the hat of a social media um, mm-hmm. figure. Yeah. You have to market yourself as, you know, a, um, you just have to really put yourself out there and make people be interested in you as a person, not just in the music you make. And what people are interested in now is people who are controversial mm-hmm. and people who um, produce some sort of um, not not drama. That's not the right word, but something that will grab your attention. And to I think to do those things and we're and make the music good. And work a full time job is just, it's really difficult. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't have to go down that route if that's what you really want. But all I'm trying to say is, it for most people, and there's a lot of artists out there, most people are not going to make a living off of their art. And so they're forced into work, into working these jobs where they're unhappy. Mm-hmm. And again, like I'm not saying that's, that's wrong. I'm not saying that we should just hand out you know, money to, to musicians who aren't doing anything or, or whatever. Like I understand there's, there's a lot of facets to this and I'm not suggesting that, um, that I have a solution. I'm just saying that it's a weird time to live in where most artists are having to suffer at a daytime job and can't make even half of what they need off of their art to support themselves. It's just weird. Yeah, it it's an it's. I feel like it it's falling down to more of an, an economy thing, mm-hmm. and 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 like people like they're raising, they're <laughs> they're raising my microphone. They're raising the prices of housing, and they're barely raising the price uh, that they're willing to pay to their employees, and it it's it's like a never ending circle of do I have enough money to pay my rent. And then how much money do I have left over? Oh, well, I'm not going to have that much money next month. So I got to put the money I have left over towards my next month's rent, that kind of thing. And it's a never ending cycle and it's so hard to get out of it. Right. That's the problem right there. Is yeah. they, you can't, when you're working a job as an artist, it's not like you're probably going to have a job. If you're committing so much time to your art that you're making something that's worth making, you're probably not going to be able to have a job that pays enough money because you have to dedicate yourself to to that job more to make more money or what you, you get what I'm saying to move yeah. up the ladder and you have more responsibility. So you probably have if you're an artist, you probably have a job that pays less than what's ideal, and so then you don't have enough capital to get out of the loop you're in. Yeah, and it's it's kind of rough. And <laughs> speaking of that. That's what we're doing. That's the situation we're in. Like, yeah. we work at, a, me and Stefan met each other because we, we work at a restaurant, uh, a fine dining Italian restaurant. <laughs> a cha- <laughs> it's a large chain and they might serve things with olives. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not positive. In a garden. In, yeah. <laughs> the olives definitely come from a garden. And so that's, that's what we do for a living. That's how we met. And like, that's the, the, the situation that we're in and it's, it's kind of rough because like we obviously aren't asking for handouts at all. Like we are not asking people to have pity on us or, or whatever else. But like we just, as an example, we work a day job where we, you know, we work full time. Plus we're trying to get our pedal business off the ground and the pedal business isn't like it's a money grab for us at all. We have to make capital uh, to keep the business going and to buy materials to build more things, but our in like our our main concern or not concern but goal, our main goal is to just make things that we think are cool that we can sell to other people uh, to support ourselves so that they can make cool things and we can make more cool things. We just want to make cool things. Like, but we're in I a loop. F- I feel like <laughs> I feel like we're we are making pretty cool stuff. Like. We're, we're not like 
focusing on necessarily like what's something that hasn't been done, but what is something that we can do to make things better. Mm -hmm. And, and I feel like, so like, we're not supposed to talk about it, but we have a pedal coming out, hopefully middle of March. (laughs) And it, we can talk about it from, from, from what we've researched, there isn't really many things that compare to it. Like as far as, is what it, it's going to be able to do, you know? So like, it's, it's not necessarily something new, but it's an improvement. It's like, I'd say like three or four are different improvements <laughs> on something that already exists. But these thing, these improvements are going to give you more, uh, more room to, to grow your sound. I would say like, so like, Instead of like just being able to do this one thing with this one pedal, this pedal, you'll be able to do multiple things. And I I feel like I feel like moving in that direction is going to be what defines us. Yeah, I I definitely think that we're on the right track. Like um, as far as as far as, you know, our business goes and stuff, we're like we. um we have a lot of cool. <laughs> I don't want to say too much. Like, we have a lot of ideas. We have a lot of ideas. We have a lot of ideas, and it's literally like the only thing holding us back is is getting our pedal in front of more people. Like that's it, and that's I I hope that's where you guys can come in and help us out and share, uh, you know, whatever you think is cool that we're doing with a friend who would think it was cool too. Like we're not trying to force it down anyone's throats or, you know, whatever, but like we think it's really cool or, or we wouldn't be doing it. We're really excited about what we've done and what we have planned. And I mean, honestly, like there's nothing that can keep us from like continuing to make things, but we want other people to be able to enjoy those things too, but you, but they got to see it first. Yeah. And uh, like for real, like we haven't run into one person that says, "I don't really like that pedal." Yeah, and we've and we've handed it to some disagreeable people <laughs> who would who would tell us the truth. Like it's not like we didn't give it to our best friends and ask them to yeah. you know give us compliments on what we're doing. We uh, have set up you know a couple places and just let people play it, and they've been happy with it, and and that makes me happy. It makes me realize that like we are doing something that's special. It's yeah. It's, it's what, different. What really like put me on, on that spot of like, we're, we're really doing something different and unique is when I was at cousins, uh, you know, doing, doing the walk around or whatever. And that the guy came in to get his base fixed and he had just bought a, a, the new earthquaker pedal and so he wasn't looking for a fuzz, right? <laughs> He's not looking for a fuzz. He just got one. He just bought a brand new one for the same price that ours is worth, you know? And I was like, check it out. Play with it. <laughs> and he did. And he loved it. Like, I am, I'm, I can't believe that. Like, you just bought it, bought this, you know, really expensive brand new pedal that came out and you still are interested interested in buying in this one yeah because that goes all the way back to the beginning where like guitar players can't have too many different kinds of distortion and pedals and stuff but like we are picky at the same time and i i think that that's really cool too because that earthquaker pedal is awesome it is and so like for him to in his mind hold us to the same quality as earthquaker yeah. it made me feel pretty good and I, I, I mean earthquaker's king to me like For i real. love earthquaker so they've put out so many great products and not one person has ever put them down yeah it's i mean it's it's phenomenal i i really like what they're what they do i look up to them a lot but but yeah that's that's what i think is cool too is people seem to really appreciate what we're doing and i just um I want, uh, I want, I want people to make cool stuff with, with our stuff. That's, <laughs> and and the new pedal that's coming out, yeah, Stefan's right. It's it's really cool. Um, 
Man, I just I just want to let it out so bad. I know, right? <laughs> it's it's so hard to keep a secret. So um so just for a little <laughs> taste, all right. For for those of you who uh are bass players but also like to play guitar sometimes. <laughs> it's guitar and big guitar. <laughs> all right, so <laughs> so the this pedal you can play guitar or bass and it has it has like a legit option where you can change the frequencies to subsegate or whatever. What word should I use for that? Uh, I would, I'm, I guess I would just say that it, you can switch between allowing the pedal to function like a normal guitar pedal would, where it cuts off some low end, or you can switch it to be more bass friendly and it'll let more sub sub through the pedal so that you can um, retain clarity on the the bass side of your bass guitar exactly uh and another feature that um seems to be pretty popular with bass guitar players is a blend knob (laughs) (laughs) where you can blend in your um clean signal into the distortion and or other effect that you have. <laughs> yeah i mean it, it could be anything <laughs> it could be anything who knows, who knows, <laughs> i mean who knows what it's gonna be i mean you got if your, you can deduce can you imagine play, <laughs> can you imagine playing a bass friendly tube screamer with a blend or even a overdrive with with a blend <laughs> yeah or even like a full grinding <laughs> fuzzy fuzz distortion with a blend yeah i mean cause, like if you're a bass player and you put bass i mean distortion on your bass or whatever we should just say it let's just say it let's just say it by the time <laughs> <laughs> it's okay listen yeah ain't nobody gonna listen to this anyway <laughs> yeah exactly like by the time anyone who <laughs> listens to this finds us and <laughs> The pedal will be out. Yeah. It does so it doesn't matter. Listen, guys, we made <laughs> we made a distortion pedal. It's got a shark on it. <laughs> it has a it has a three band active EQ with uh, control over the low, mid, and treble frequencies. It has a distortion knob so you can blend in saturation. It has an output knob like a volume knob so you can control the overall volume output of the pedal. It has a blend knob where you can blend in clean signal, which you could use for bass to blend in uh, the clean signal of the bass to retain the low end. And it also has a toggle switch that switches between two capacitors, one that is more suited for guitar tones, one that is more suited for bass tones. That's the new pedal. <laughs> and if, <laughs> and if, you, <laughs> if you're listening to this, you're, you might be the only person out there who knows <laughs> what our new pedal is. It's going to come out in the middle of March. It's going to come out in the middle. Oh, man, it felt good to get that off my chest. For real? <laughs> like, I didn't told anybody. <laughs> No, I'm telling everybody who listens. It's it's been a pretty well rounded secret. Like we've not been very open with what we're working on because we don't <laughs> we don't want to be like like so like we we've had we've had this problem where we like come up with this idea and and we like like even with our fuzz circuit, um, like we like we didn't completely you know follow a rat circuit like we we took the idea of the rat circuit and we did our own thing with it and then we added uh our own options with it and then like there's some other you know lower pedal companies that have that have put out similar things with more options uh (laughs) and it's like it's it's just straight up a rat clone with more options to it and it's like that's cool but we thought about it first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like like that idea of having clipping options on a rat type circuit was completely uh, a gen- a genuine uh, idea born out of ignorance to what everyone else was was doing. Like I was just like, this is a really cool pedal. We should make something similar, but maybe we can add different flavors of distortion by changing the clipping diodes, or yeah. or you know excluding them completely. And then literally, like after we got it produced and like everything was made, which I mean, it still sounds great. I'm not disappointed with it at all, but. Like as soon as we finished it, I started seeing rats with like different rat 
or takes on the rat circuit with clipping diode uh, switches uh, popping up everywhere. Like everyone was doing it. It's like, it's like when you buy a car and you're like, Oh, I've never seen that car before. That's awesome. And you start driving it around and in, <laughs> like, in your town, you start seeing it everywhere. Yeah, exactly. Like that's what happened. And um, again, our, ours is, you know, different from the, the other ones from what I can tell. I haven't seen the circuits of all the other ones, but like it's, it's still different. So like, it's not like, you know, a big deal, but it's just one of those things. So we've started, um, we don't want anyone to know our secret projects because <laughs> we don't want the same thing to happen. And with this new pedal, this shark pedal, um, I can confidently say that as far as I know right now, there is one other pedal that does something similar, but is still extremely different. Like it, it has a couple of the same options and that it still sets it apart in that way. So we're really excited about this one. Mm -hmm. And, um, I mean, I always try to make things that I want for myself. Yeah. You know, like if it's, if it's something that I think that I can use on my pedal board that I would actually use, then I want to make it Yeah, like instead of, uh, copying someone else's ideas or, or buying from another company, because now we're capable of producing our own ideas, which has been such a long road, but, every pedal that we are going to put out is something that I personally stand behind and like would use. And so, man, come on shark. <laughs> I want it. Yeah. Give me that shark. And I feel pretty good about, uh, the way it's going to look the, the shark graphic. Yeah. It's- Stefan does all the graphics and stuff. <laughs> uh, the squid one was, a nightmare. I'm going to have to say that right now. <laughs> All the little things that I had to do to make that thing work is is kind of mind-blowing. There's a, there's a lot more math involved than I thought there would be as far as like <laughs> dimensions and spacing and stuff. I'm like, yeah. oh man. It's like, I kind of like it because I feel like I'm doing science again. But like, but like if you look at pictures of a vampire squid... um. They don't look nothing like ours. You know why? (laughs) (laughs) Because I created that thing from scratch. (laughs) Yeah, I remember you sending me the draft of it, and you were like, hey, do you like the tentacles? And I was like, yeah, and you're like, they're duck feet. (laughs) And I was like, what? (laughs) You're like, yeah, I got the webbing from a duck foot, and I photoshopped it together. (laughs) Yeah, I basically took uh, this really cool picture of an octopus, that I I really like I liked the colors I liked the 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 position it was in I photoshopped in like I took I took a picture of duck feet and I cut out the webbing parts of the duck feet and blended them in with the tentacles so that we could get get that vampire squid look and then I took uh talons from a falcon <laughs> And added it to the end of the tentacles <laughs> to get those little pointy things that are sticking off a of vampire squid. And so, like, our vampire squid is obviously way meaner and larger <laughs> than an actual vampire squid. Well, yeah, because it's like five animals <laughs> like wrapped into one. <laughs> but like, yeah, uh, I'm really, co- I'm really happy with the way it looks. It looks, it looks large and in charge, and it looks like it's. If you came up on it, it would destroy you. Like, that's what I like about it. Yeah, and I mean, that that was the whole idea was, we want the graphics to, excuse me, I'm having some throat trouble or something, <laughs> but we, we want the graphics to, you know, fit the sound of the pedal, and like, the, uh, dare I say, the vampire squid is extremely aggressive, Yeah, and um, that's so we went with like a black and red thing, and uh, yeah, it turned out really great. Mm-hmm. Like, um. Uh, yeah, I'm really happy with it. I mean, the, I just want other just, people to have even one. just like, and I don't know, like a lot of people who have who have actually seen it in person, or or have actually purchased it. Uh, they don't like when you see it in pictures. You don't notice that that it actually has a gradient from dark to lighter red. And like, I haven't seen a lot of pedals out there that that have been able to accomplish that. Yeah, like and have that gradient. It's it's really hard to capture with photography too. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's really difficult because it's, I don't know how to explain it, but like the lighting is, it makes it really difficult to, to capture 
the um, how drastic that gradient is. It's it's really nice, and not to mention we uh, on the squid we went with a um, a varnish uh, mm-hmm. for the like the clear durable uh, top coat, mm-hmm. and uh, so all it, and it's UV printed. So all the parts that are kind of like bumpy looking on the squid, like the the squid artwork, they, they actually are bumpy. Like it's the artwork's raised up a little bit, yeah. and it's it's crazy. Yeah, I I like it like. Even if it even if it didn't sound great, I would still buy it just because it looks cool. <laughs> well, I don't know if I'd go that far. Like <laughs> well, I I mean for real, right? I believe you. For me personally, like I'm more I'm more about like I'm more about the artistry than than the quality. But like I'm not I'm not saying that it it doesn't fit both of those categories. <laughs> right. It's I'm just- not saying that at all. But for me personally, I'm more about the artistry. Well, uh, I mean, pedals are a work of art. That's for sure. I think that's why so many people collect them. And listen, all you people out there, <laughs> <laughs> there are certain pedals, and you can deny this all you want. You can lie to yourself. You can lie to me. Whatever. There is no denying that graphics play a part in the collectability of a pedal and how much you want it. There, there are pedals that sound like... Not super well. I mean, they're honestly, if I'm being completely honest, I haven't heard like any pedals ever that I think sound like crap. That one that we heard on the video the other day sounded like crap. If I'm being honest, I don't remember what you're talking about. I'm sure that I agreed that it sounded like crap, though. I don't remember what it was called, but you told me to look at a specific time 25 22. Oh, no, no, that was okay. So that was on the JHS video, yeah, of them like doing like a clean blend on the fuzz it's not because i thought it sounded like crap well it did though (laughs) well well, i guess you agree with josh but i just thought that was funny because like that's we're not doing that exact idea but like we kind of have a similar function on our new pedal like the with the blend knob and that's what i was trying to get your attention on was like that he was like hey look at this uh, it sounds like crap, and it's what we're doing. <laughs> but, but but what I'm what what I was confused about is that our ours doesn't actually do what that pedal was doing. Well, no, not exactly. But like the point, like the pedal he was playing, it was like a distortion pedal. Uh, I think it might have been a fuzz pedal specifically with a blend knob, a clean blend knob. Yeah, and but- so like when he would turn the blend up enough, it would just sound like someone else was playing. Like imagine it, him it sounded like two different guitars <laughs> right, yeah. playing at the same time. One was clean and one was like a really low like staticky fuzz. Yeah, and like that's what Nick on on the JHS show said. He was like it sounds like some guys playing the same thing as you with the distortion pedal behind you. <laughs> like he's standing behind you and he's playing the same thing as you with distortion and you're like, "Hey, can you stop? <laughs> like, can you, can you stop playing that? But like, that's that's why I brought that up because I thought it was funny because like our blend knob does blend to that point where yeah. you can barely hear the, the yeah. distortion. But like, I mean, I wouldn't use it that way personally. It's just you know, it, that's not what I intended that function to be used for. I'm sure you can get some cool sounds out of it, but that's why I brought that up. But but anyway, what I was saying was like I haven't heard very many pedals that I like if any, where I'm like, oh, that sounds bad, like, no matter what. Like, it sounds really bad. So, I mean, you know, like, like I was saying, like, what I, I was mean, trying to say is the graphics play a part in the, <laughs> in how much you want it, and some pedals look really cool, and they probably don't sound bad, but maybe they don't sound as cool as the graphics look. You know what I'm saying? So, anyway, yeah. <laughs> I gotta say, to say, I gotta just say, that pedal that I sent you that one time, that one that did the random things. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that sounded weird, real weird. Yeah. It was- <laughs> the, there are a lot of pedals that do that, like where it's just like this, like they do things that other pedals don't. Like they'll arpeggiate delays with like weird jet engine sounds on them, like flanger. And I'm like, man, I wouldn't, like, I get how you could use that as a creative tool, but like, I don't want it. <laughs> I don't want that like at all. it, like okay. As far as like quality of sound, I mean, like the sounds that are coming out of that pedal sound 
of good quality, but right. I wouldn't put those sounds together. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's what I, and there, there are some people in some weird experimental genres who figure out how to make that stuff work. It works in their music, but like that's just not what kind of guitar that I play. So like, I'm just like the Rainbow Machine from Earthquaker. Like if I like, I've almost bought that a few times because I love Earthquaker so much. But like, I wouldn't know what to do with it. And like, that's what the company even says themselves. They're like, like people will email them and say like, Hey, this pedal's weird. What am I supposed to do with it? And they're like. I don't know. You bought it. Figure it out. <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, we know what it can do, but like, what are you going to use it for? I don't know. Yeah. Is it weird? Yeah. <laughs> but like, you just got to find the right context yeah. for it, you know? It's just crazy. Yeah. Are you ready to wrap this up? Not really. I'm having fun. Oh, okay. Then let's keep going. Let's keep, I'm not, I'm not tired of it at all. I mean, I it's, can... it's, I mean, we're pushing an hour. Oh yeah, we're coming up on an hour. That's that's all I thought we would do. I thought we would. I thought it would be difficult to do an hour. That's the only reason I'm asking. If you want to keep going, buddy, I can talk all day. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, I I feel like we should wrap wrap it up. Yeah, and and like oh, you tease. <laughs> save 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 some more for another for another time. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> okay well I will, I will say though your hair's looking fly <laughs> thank you well yeah i'm i'm very happy with the job that you did that's all i'm gonna say uh hair and makeup for this episode by <laughs> stefan snyder no makeup um, yeah no i i didn't wear makeup but if i did i'd probably let stefan do it because he did such a good job of my hair but anyway uh thank you guys for listening if you've made it this far thank you for listening to our incessant um uh ranting ranting that's the word i was looking for and um please check us out on uh all social media uh outlets wherever you consume social media except for facebook facebook is not good we we didn't we didn't do the facebook thing but we have instagram tiktok youtube uh instagram's where we're most active we try to post cool stuff on there uh we're at ta pedals of course uh, same thing on TikTok at TA Pedals. So check us out on there. Uh, feel free to shoot us a message if you have any questions or comments or anything. If you want to talk to us, if you want to chat, yeah, um, we're all, I could talk we're all day. We're always up for a discussion. It's true. It's true. And we're 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 nice sometimes. <laughs> anyway, thank you for listening, and we will talk to you next episode. Bye. Bye.